What's going on guys, Matt Schaefer back here with another Mosaic Audiophile build for you. This one in a 79 Corvette Stingray. So let's go ahead and check it out. All right, so this was basically a full interior build where we were adding locations in order to give this thing a great audio system. So basically I'll overview everything that we did into the interior and everything that we changed, everything that we added. This car originally, the outside was done, repainted. There's an LS3 swap underneath the hood. I'll overlay a picture here of what the engine looks like, but the whole outside of this car was completely redone. Motor was redone, restored, and the interior basically had a lot to be desired for. So basically with the dashboard and the interior, it was originally just gonna be making a new console, making everything kinda fit better than the retro stuff that you can buy online, right? So there's a lot of gaps and it just didn't look good. So we pretty much rebuilt a lot of the inside of the car minus the door panels and some other parts, but um, center console, rear system, all the audio equipment that we uh, added, we made it look factory. And the big idea behind this build was to make it a modern stingray right so it's like this we use this the modern stingray logo throughout the build but we still wanted to represent the classic of the 79 so everything that we added we gave it a modern flair we added modern features and modern electronics but we still tried to respect the you know the the, the factory right the the year style of this car so i guess starting off with the front doors in this audio system, we did uh, a front three-way. So it's a Utopia M six inch woofer in the door. And then you have a mid and tweeter up on the dashboard. So these pods were handmade to fit the factory door panel as best as possible. We gave it some modern flair. Again, uh, aluminum respecting the original design to accent everything that you see here in the door. You have the Felcal emblem here at the bottom. Again, the aluminum. You have an insert here out of acrylic. You have two removable grills here that are uh, grill cloth. These are all magnetized on, so this thing can easily pop off. Uh, and then we use the this leather that matches the OEM as best as possible. These door panels are gonna get reupholstered. Uh, we were throwing out the idea of just redoing the whole door panel entirely, but that kind of pushes it up in an extra budget tier range that uh, we were pretty much already maxed out from everything that we were building here so love the look of this and you're going to see this design uh this line coming up throughout the build so i incorporated this throughout the entire build you're going to see that up in the mid-range and tweeter mounts and then you'll see it in the center console and in the subwoofer enclosure so this is a theme that i try to carry out throughout the uh, all the pieces that we ended up building so up top got a little glare here on the windshield but you can see we have the Focal emblem matching what we have in the door, and then you have the mid-range and the tweeter. It is very sleek to the dash, so I mean it doesn't come up at all. It almost sits as flush with the dash, but it is on top of the dash because we had to basically cut them in, and then they use magnets in order to snap on. So I'll show you the other side here. Like I said, we had mentioned those magnets, so if you just take your hand, come down here, and then pull. You can see this pops off very easily, and then you have your magnets there, and then you have your mid-range and tweeter. This had to be cut into the dash, hence why we created it to kind of overlap where we had to cut the dash. That just sucks back into place, and everything fits down, and it fits pretty seamless there with the dashboard, and as you can see, that same design that you see on the door panel is here on the mid-range and tweeter. And again, looking at it, from the dash side, it's basically completely flushed in with the dashboard, does not obstruct view at all. Very difficult in order to fit all this equipment in this very narrow car, but uh, sounds absolutely amazing. The staging, the width depth is going to shock you, you know, if you were to sit in this car and listen to it, just because this car is very narrow. You perceive everything as such, and uh, the stage definitely is not. So that's an Alpine 9 inch Halo that we basically modded in this location. Now, as far as the um, the brain goes, or the, the actual radio part, it's mounted up up and down behind the dashboard. So it's mounted straight up. We used a extended ribbon harness 
a ribbon cable in order to relocate the screen here. So this is pushed back to as far as we could get it. Obviously the gauges, these Dakota digital gauges were originally right here. So another problem that we had when we got this car is the glove box didn't fit well at all. It was practically hanging off. There's a bunch of gaps. It didn't sit flush. And this is how a lot of these Chinese, you know, dashes and all that kind of stuff, retro mod stuff fits. So the brain for the Dakota Digital was right behind this panel here. So what I ended up doing is just relocating the gauges to fit here. And this is all on magnets. So basically you can put your hand up behind here, pop this out. This is held on by uh, four 13 pound magnets. So it's very strong. It's not going to move or, you know, budge, but you can pop it off in order to get to the HVAC and also to get to the Dakota Digital Brain, which is right behind here. Uh, obviously, I know that these are all, you can get the gauge cluster, the Dakota Digital gauge cluster with all this stuff built in. But with that being said, this was already in the car. So we just tried to problem solve for the area that we had, right? We had to figure out a good glove box uh, area and he likes the look of the modernized gauge dashboard because again if you saw the engine this is a modern 79 uh, but like I said we're still respecting that factory factory style and design as far as the console goes all of this completely redone handmade the shifter and the shifter boot is still exactly how it was from the beginning. I just adapted into it, everything else completely redone. So all of these pieces of acrylic, that was all handmade, done on the laser. Uh, these, all these pieces of aluminum are, you know, hand jigsawed, hand routed to create this. So all of these, you know, we did not use a, a CNC to cut all the aluminum. We did all this stuff practically by hand, uh, the old school way. And we used Searmark spray in order to create the black um, labeling on the aluminum. So you'll see some of that stuff in the back, which I'll reference as well. Uh, Sting, new modern Stingray logo. We have a vintage air controller for the AC. And then we have a modern GM style window switch button for both left and right power window and then we have the two vintage air uh, vents up here and i did these two rings out of aluminum myself so all these were hand routed and the reason behind that is i wanted to bring the design of our helix conductor controller this is for the dsp to control the volume the sub bass and the preset i wanted to incorporate this and make it blend in, right? So we have a black vent up there with aluminum ring, which I created. And I did the same here, created this aluminum ring. And the cool thing about this armrest, it one, it floats, it's a floating design. There's some lights under here, which I can overlay some pictures of what it looks like at night. And I have this uh, aluminum mount, again, hand routed, uh, handmade. And this basically gives that support for the arm so this thing doesn't move at all. Uh, quarter 20 uh, Allen heads that are bolting it to the console itself. And like I said, the cool thing about that is it falls right at your hand. So it's super easy to control volume, control your sub bass very quickly. Um, so you don't even have to put your hand up there to touch the volume of the Alpine Halo. We have our SP2000. This is going to be part of the audio infrastructure source wise of this audio system. So preset one is going to be our Alpine Halo 9. Uh, that's gonna wor work through preset one. Everything that is the Alpine Halo is gonna work through the first preset. And then preset two is going to be our Astell and Kern SP2000. Uh, another cool thing about this area here, dependent on how he's gonna use it. And if he's not using this, I basically molded in a skosh uh, wireless charging unit. So for any kind of phone, we could just throw the phone right there, magnetize it, and it'll instantly charge. I have a magnet on the back of this just to attach this for when he is using it in the car. If he's not using it, then like I said, he can throw his phone there and call it a day. We have our charging cable for the Astel wired into the car. Of course, our analog input, which goes to our DSP. And like I said, this, uh, this design here that we talked about 
that uh, that line carries throughout. So we see the same line here in the center console on the aluminum. And as you can see, like from the side view, the halo really complements this whole dash area. I didn't know if I'd be able to fit it. I didn't know how I'd, you know, how jumbled it would all look, but I feel like as far as the center console goes, it looks very modern and it, it really represents the 79 style with the aluminum and just the simplicity of it. And this thing, uh, I always had this as an idea for the, the floating armrest. And this reminds me a lot of like some of the more modern Corvettes where you see this kind of turned the other way and it's up here on the console. You know how it like kind of, there's that handle that comes down here in a lot of the vets. This reminds me a lot of that and kind of pays homage to that kind of style in more of the modern vets. All right, now looking at the back, I'll throw up the product picture here of the, the picture that I always take before I start the build. Whenever you have this much product and you have very limited space, I mean, a lot of people would say this car sucks working on, there's not a lot of space. It's very hard to figure some stuff out. I mean, we're, we're trying to shove four amps and two subs back here along with the DSP, a battery, fuses and all of that stuff and still have to make it serviceable. So, you know, what I always like to say is there's a thousand ways to do, do things, but there's really one way that's gonna work the most efficiently. Um, and we always try and keep everything serviceable. So with that being said, we can still service everything back here. We have four Moscone Pro amps. We have a Moscone Pro 410 that runs the tweeter and the mid range up front. We have a 210, which powers each woofer, door woofer. And then we have two 110s, which power each Utopia M 10 inch subwoofer. So there's two subwoofers in this enclosure that is hovering over these amplifiers here. Uh, the amplifiers can still breathe, the fans can turn on and move air. There is a light under here. I can overlay a picture of what it looks like at night. And then from there, we uh, pay homage to the, the new Stingray logo as well. And that's uh, another uh, handmade piece of aluminum where we did that Stingray logo on the laser with that Surmark spray. Uh, we incorporated the same leather and then black vinyl because we wanted to really focus on the center console here and have the look of the center console go all the way back. We did a couple pieces of aluminum that are the break between this upholstery and this enclosure. So we have three polished pieces of aluminum uh, just to kind of, again, offer that very OEM looking transition. And then back here, these panels remove, right? So all of these are completely removable. And then under here, we have our Helix DSP Ultra. This is our digital sound processor that uses the brand new conductor. Talked about this uh, controller for a while, which is why I really wanted to use it in this scenario. It's a great DSP, love it a lot, very versatile. Then we have this centerpiece, right? So this centerpiece, if I kind of put this down, I can pull up the center. It's magnetized on here. So this comes completely off. And now we can access my new fuses. So all of the accessories that I added, the RGB lights, the windows, the door locks, all that stuff is rewired. And the access to it is right here below. We have our ground distribution for our amplifiers and our power distribution for our amplifiers right there. Very easy if you need to change any fuses. Obviously you see the recessed cups here for the magnets of this piece and then underneath here of course we have our battery and you can see the uh, laser logo that we did on the leather that represents the battery under here we have our new power xs agm battery along with the with the battery charger and tender so one of the things that I've done a lot in a lot of cars that are gonna sit for the winter is we install a battery tender in the car slash power supply, and we run a electrical cable underneath the car with a marine plug. And you can just plug it into the wall outside the car so the whole car can be, you know, the cover could be on the car. And you can have a electrical cable underneath the car. I'll overlay a picture here of what that area looks like behind the car. So. 
again, even if this thing's at a car show, whatever, you can easily hook up power to it, play this thing all day long with everything off and have no issues at all. Keep the car's battery powered at all times. And as you can see, once everything is together, all the lines meet very, very flush. Then looking at this panel from the side, we also did a sandwich piece of aluminum here just to accent and break up the top and the bottom. We added the black vinyl to the bottom. Of course, we have the leather on the top. And of course, everything bolts together as you see there. So this gives you a better look at the subwoofer enclosure. Hopefully the glare is not too bad. We're also overlay some pictures here, but same thing. We have the big piece of aluminum here that is hand routed and polished. The Focal emblem that you see there is done with the Surmark spray in the laser. We have two pieces of grill cloth inserts that are allowing the air from the subwoofer to play through. This whole thing was basically made to look like a rear deck. So it, it's kind of floating, kind of looks modular, but I wanted to have the rear deck feel that you would see prominently through the back glass here. There's lighting that you can see revolving around that you can't really see now, but um, at night there's a glow that comes between where the grill cloth inserts are. So we have the same design there, that uh, basically that line that bends down and back up that you saw on the door panel and in the console and in the front tweeter pods. All of that flows throughout the car so it has and keeps the same exact design. And then there is a small aluminum brake. Let's see if you can see it there. There's a small aluminum brake that runs down that whole panel there to give it a little bit of a uh, secondary little accent. So it's a real cool look when you look at it from the back. And again, I know a lot of the glare is kind of tough on the camera, but when you're sitting here and seeing it in person and you see all the polished aluminum that basically just runs down the center there into the console. Uh, it just looks very, very, in my opinion, again, very OEM. And I didn't know how this whole car was gonna come together, what it was gonna look like when I took on the project, but this is probably one of my more favorite builds based on the simplicity with the design and the style to fit the 79, but also do what the customer wanted, which was have that modern Corvette you know, media type feel with the audio and some of the accents and electronics, but also still make it reminiscent of the car, right? So that's exactly what we did. Super happy with how it turned out. And then just to run you through this again with the electronics on, obviously the car's on, but we do have our SP2000 here, our radio here. Uh, it's kind of tough to see and notice, but we, basically recess this back a lot and there's a good about three inch overhang uh, of a hood here so you can still see this very easily during the daytime and then uh, like I stated before you have your controller here which illuminates as you can see how it lights up as you come up so still very easy to see in the daylight you can actually control the brightness which is very cool after you stop using it, it dims back down a little bit, but once you start using it, it illuminates uh, pretty bright so you can see what it is you're doing. Hit it once, now that's your sub volume as you can see, and then hit it again and that's your preset, which is showing preset number two at the moment. So very quick and easy to use that. If you gotta take a Bluetooth phone call, you can switch back to preset one very easily. And then the last panel that I didn't really mention would be down here, which is our e-brake. Uh, we have our USB for the Alpine CarPlay and Android Auto. And then this is going to be the USB input that goes to our DSP. So if we got to tune the car, we plug in right here and we're good to go. Kind of tough to see here. Maybe I'll overlay a pic if you can't see it, but we also have the Mosaic M hidden so subtly right here uh, in the back. Again, hand routed aluminum and that same design that we see there and we see up here again flowing and taking that design throughout the entire process i mean that's really it guys uh i want to thank you for following all these builds and giving me the opportunity to do these builds you guys are the reason that i'm have all these jobs lined up and um get to do some pretty cool stuff you know it's really instagram and youtube are really filtering all the jobs that i do uh so you know if you're one of those people just sitting back and wondering how to get in touch with me or how to uh get something built by me 
you can contact me. Here's my information. You have my email address followed by my phone number. These are two great points of contact. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram. Here's our three handles below. My personal one, Mosaic Design, and then of course the one for sound effects, which is the shop that I work at. And Mosaic Design is basically a brand under the umbrella of sound effects for you to kind of understand how that works, where I'm the only person working on the car. Um, it's totally separate from sound effects as the company itself. We also have the website, mosaicdesign.com. This is a perfect spot to see every single job that we do, everything that we've built, the full catalog of things we've built, uh, to see the differences between the different types of builds. Also, all the YouTube videos that you see here are associated with each build. So it's very easy to see what we've done and see a YouTube video on it very quickly and also see all the build log pictures, all the behind the scenes of each individual build. Go check that out. If you're new to the channel, if this is the first thing that you're seeing, we've done a lot of awesome cars. We've done a lot of cars with the same type of, you know, workmanship into other styles and other makes, manufacturers and things like that. So make sure you subscribe and also hit that notification bell so you can be alerted anytime we drop a new video. And then if you uh, are one of those OG people that love audio to its core, maybe had something when you were 20 years old and you still love audio or whatever, you, you're still interested, we have a podcast that we started that revolves around uh, people who have history within audio, who, you know, 80s, 90s, they had something in their car uh, and they're trying to get educated on how to make modern cars sound even better. Because obviously if you buy a Porsche with a Burmeister, you might think that that's great. That's not great at all. Um, you know, if, if that's your, if, if your reference is Porsche with Burmeister or Audi with B&O, you know, it gets way, way, way better than that. So that's where we talk about these things, what, what you have to do to achieve good audio. And uh, like I said, even if you have any questions, you can always give me a call. We can talk about it, talk about a future project. So with that being said, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for the follow. Thanks for the support. And until next time, I'll check you later.